Morphling, though, is really good against Life Stealer. Yep. <clears throat> it's a comfy pick for a Pavaga. Uh, off lane for an Amiga. Tidehunter still there. Maybe okay. Clearing out Chan and Ravage Counter to the Black Hole. You also have a Brewmaster direction. Could still go. Purge wouldn't be bad this game. Their crowd control is already pretty solid, though. Both supports are bringing a hefty amount, specifically Bane, of course. Yeah, I, li I like to see them pick some catch, some burst damage for the Morphling. Um, I actually wouldn't hate, like, a, an Earthshaker. Yeah. Earthshaker went. That'd be bad here. Oh, okay. Bounty Offlane Bounty Hunter. 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 Nice. Yeah, we've been seeing the glimpses of the core bounty hunter. Position one, position three. Yeah, this guy was broken as hell. <laughs> Why is it so good here, you think? Mm. Chen harassment. It's going to allow you to keep eyes on the Nyx, the Enigma. Um, it actually does a pretty insane amount of damage. So he's going to be able to trade relatively well in lane. He has very high armor, so he doesn't care as much about Morphling's high uh, physical damage. And with BH, you usually just go... I mean, we honestly, he, he could go for like a Dagon to burst the Morphling. He could go for Orchid. He could go for heavy physical damage. Or he could just go Auras as well. I'm excited. See what he does. It's uh, who was their offlane? The chosen one? Yeah, it was the chosen one. Probably played mm -hmm. here. <clears throat> they ban the Pugna. They pick Monkey King. Okay. So they'll finish here. The MK mid. Up and around trees. Um. Timbersaw feels, yeah, not that good. There's like good reasons for it, but then there's also pretty bad. They banned DK. Couldn't see that option. Let's see. Shadow Fiend. <laughs> um. I was thinking more like maybe a Quap. Something like high tempo. Yeah. Yeah, needing a hero that creates space around the Morphling. Takes advantage of. Enigma is a bit of a greedy hero too, though. Yeah, but Quap also doesn't really get ganked by Bounty Hunter. True. Getting one that... Isn't as susceptible there. Would be nice. What's it going to be? Invoker. No. Lena. I haven't seen her in a while. Hasn't been a popular pick as of late. But Pikachu. You will play the Lena this time around. Another uh, decent yeah. divine favor target, I suppose. I feel like Lena is going to be pretty susceptible to ganks in the mid lane, whether it's the Bane wrapping around with a sleep or Bounty Hunter making a rotation around rune time or something like that. Lena, well, she does move fast after casting spells. She has no escape mechanic normally. <clears throat> and is quite squishy. Actually, all the heroes on Pavaga are quite squishy. Yeah. And that is pretty dangerous against, I mean... Really, Monkey King and Bounty Hunter and Life Stealer. All the cores. Yeah, the Rage is going to be decent in this game. We talked about Enigma already, and on the Black Holes will be nice. I suppose all they do have is the Fiend's Grip, so if he wants to get a BKB, and if they can deal with Bane, then could be for some big Black Holes here on his... Uh, on the side of Pavaga, but it's, I always kind of go back to whenever this hero is picked is 
yes, that's a big part of him, but he does so much more than just simply being a black hole target. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of times we're not even seeing Blink Dagger picked up on Enigma anymore. Yeah. And, and this meta with the Auras being so useful, I go back to that, it just that almost seems like the better way to build him. But we'll see. How uh, Cheshire Cat prefers is the one playing it. And loading into our second game again, Amiga. They took the first game. And you take a look at the odds as coming to the screen now. Uh, Namiga is favored now. Of course, up one game to nothing. That helps after being quite down in the first game, according to the odds. And would have somewhat agreed with them. But with the way they played in the first game, I uh, I could definitely see an outcome favoring them here. So um, 1xbet.com yeah, if you like to I think they're going to win. You think Namiga's got this? Yeah, I think it's going to be really snowball-y either way. Okay. Both teams have lineups that really can just go like zero to sixty, and do so very quickly. But I just I don't know I I like the way Namiga played last game, and I also like the fact that they have a bit more beef on their side with the Life Stealer, the Elder Titan as well, and Monkey King. If if somebody does get Black Hold, Monkey King can always put down the T on top of it, True. and sort of protect his team from follow up that way. <clears throat> Yeah, it is a nice response, definitely. Yeah, Lena into the Life Stealer matchup, also a little funky. Of course, when Rage is up, her usefulness against that hero is <laughs> not too good. Uh, suppose could always get an Ags. That helps. Yeah, that's definitely one way to counter it, but I agree. I I am not super into this Lena pick. I don't feel like it really helps them that much. I mean... I guess it gives you some range tower hitting if you want to be really up tempo, but I'm I don't know. I, I feel like Namiga would be happy if Pavaga tried to push really early. Yeah, well, creep clearing is a bit of a weakness here on the radiant side. So if, the, if there is an opening for Pavaga, I think that's something that they do have at least until like the radiance is online, you know, later game, sure. But in this first like 15 minute window. Pavaga needs to be taking towers. You have an Enigma, you yep. have Lena, you have Chen. You need to get those objectives, and we set that last game, too, with the whole lineup that they had, and unfortunately didn't really do much of it. Cheshire Cap, by the way, he's uh, a little bit of trouble. Open wounds, the boundless strike, a very minimal stun, though, and the brain sap, they're trying to kill him, missing the uphill attack. That might be the difference maker. Oh, I think it is. Yeah, if that hits, he definitely is dead. So, manages to live. Heal on up, eating some trees. Also has four mangoes. Continually spawn those Eidolons. Plenty of HP regen as well. No Malphus done though to help for a turn kill, of course, getting the Eidolons. So into the laning phase we now go. But yeah, I go back to, again, Pavaga. These first 15 minutes, very telling of how this game could shape up. They need that early lead. They need to push objectives. Uh, Cheshire Cat might be dead here. Another open wounds. Doesn't have a teammate. We talked about this. I mean, it's probably what he wants, but he would have liked the Nyx Assassin right now. <laughs> Zitrax gets the first blood. Early start for an Amiga. Yeah, left alone, and they're going to abuse that. There's uh, even, even if he has a Malphus there, you know, obviously Malphus against Lifestealer really isn't good. I mean, he just rage through it. Yeah, so that could be repeated if he uh, slightly overextends. Oh, Palantimos, jeez. He got chunked right there, but has a divine favor to heal up. Uh, Morphling. Mid matchup, heavily favoring the Monkey King right now, too. 9-2 and two versus 5-0. and oh. Yeah, Lena. Lena's uh, attack animation is just so bad, and the projectile speed is, like, the worst in the game, so... Monkey King, just trading some regen for last hits and definitely coming out on top so far. <clears throat> Take a look at all three lanes with your two eyes. Do your best here. Palantimos, he's being bodied completely at the top lane. Bounty Hunter and Elder Titan just kind of saying hi to him and from a distance. Obviously, Chen is, is not much he's going to be able to do until level two, which he has his... He has a heartbeat now, so let the shocking begin. Interesting creep to go for. 
Chosen one takes it out. The uh, the no invis build being the way that you play offlane bounty hunter. Okay. Maxing shuriken toss and Janata, only taking the shadow walk when you actually want to leave the lane, and then just pretty much last hitting and harassing with Janata, and then maxing out your burst from the shuriken toss so you can get kills pretty early on. Palatimos is actually going to get completely destroyed in this lane, I think. Yeah, the one game we saw in the Valentine Madness event. We saw that we saw a safe lane bounty hunter. It was impressive the damage that this hero can put out. Yeah. And I think you were touching on that too. Again, the off lane really no different, just the skill build, the way he builds Donata and the sure you can he is heavy, heavy burst that you're looking at. And of course, naturally being a bounty hunter implies the tracks. Talk about <laughs> snowballing with the game. That is very, yeah. very high potential. And the thing is, I mean you look at him, right? He's got seven armor at level three. He can just dive towers. He can also just build into phase boots, which are probably the best boots in the game for melee heroes right now, because of what they do. Oh, very fire. And actually, you know, clever play there. That was Elder Titan getting turned even. J4, you see the creep that he has. He has the ice. He applied the armor as they were diving him. If that creep isn't there, he very likely dies. So nice mitigation. Yeah, that's a really good creep to have in this lane, considering how aggressive Namiga is playing it. I could like to see them start side pulling, but this camp has been blocked to avoid Elder Titan being able to sack up the Astral Spirit damage. So, well played by Pavaga in this top lane to sort of mitigate the pressure that they can put on. Yeah, yeah reading the matchup, of course. Well, J4 being a very defensive chin with that Ice Ogre, applying the armor across the board. Trying to give themselves a fighting chance in that laning phase. And you take a look at the CS, though. All three Radiant Heroes, cores that is, are winning their matchups currently. Uh, the mid one being the biggest gap there. 20 and 7 versus 16 and 2 on the monkey. So go back to that. And yeah, the attack animation, Alina, she's lacking. I guess when she's level 6, will be a little bit more of a threat. But at least for now, Monkey King's feeling very good. And the uh, the mischief can be used to dodge a decent amount of Lena's spells because her attack animation or her, all of her animations are so long. True. She's actually one of the slowest heroes in the entire game when doing anything. But boy, does it hurt when she connects. Kind of makes sense, I suppose. Middle lane, Pikachu might be in trouble. Elder Titan. He's uh, he's roaming in. Pikachu's playing a little safe. Sunlight doesn't have the most life himself. He'll balance strike, but up here. Chen finds Elder Titan, and that'll be the end of it. He pinged out the vision, though. He saw the wards going down. So it might have some counter warning coming out soon from the Radiant team. And you do see Bounty Hunter pick up a point in that Ghost Walk at level 4. Or not Ghost Walk, but <laughs> what is it called? The Invis? Shadow Walk. Shadow Walk. That's yeah, a different hero. Oh. Valentimos, he will live. He started shifting into the strength just in time, but... Again, he always got to be susceptible or scared of that. Oh, recalled in the Knicks, but not in time. Yeah, the right idea there. Yeah, we could see Lol set up with the Spike Carapace on the Astral Spirit when it is sent out, though. So, still looking to get aggressive here. And, I mean, this is good. They, they need to be empowering this more fun as much as possible. Mid lane, Fishman's here, Brain Sap, Sunlight's chasing. It's gonna sleep in, but not much Monkey King can do with that. <clears throat> Gets the TP out of it, J4, Divine Favor, needs time to kick in, not gonna help him there. You see the sure you can toss and that damage coming out, so good job collapsing on Chen. Nyx Assassin, he took over the mid lane in the meantime. Rotates over there, but a thousand net worth lead for Namiga early on. Goes back to all three of their laners doing well. Life Stealer is one of those three, and he's got a Midas around the corner. Goes the recipe first, but Gloves of Haste shortly, shortly to follow. And we know what that means. Now, I guess it's the same question as last game. Does he go the Radiance? You're dealing with a Nyx Assassin. The burn isn't like great this game, but <laughs> maybe he yeah, just. Yeah, my will. guess is no. My <laughs> guess is actually no. He, he might get it later, but he has 
a, a Blightstone in his inventory already, which would indicate that he probably will go for a Desolator. Um, okay. At some point. Either that or, I mean, does he go Solar Crest? I don't know. Yeah, I, I can see the Deso. Talking about building damage. Again, it's not the greatest on the Radiant side. Yeah, that helps. So, see what he has decides. Interesting here. He's Did he get the... Okay, no, he's going to go the gloves. Okay, he's going to go that in the face boots. But he's going to upgrade the boots first before even going Midas. But no, he will finish the Midas. And top of the charts. Oh, they found Nyx Assass, or I guess they found Bounty Hunter, but not really. <laughs> it's got some distance anyways. And here comes Monkey King. They want to connect Primal Spring in. Found the strike, hits two. Spike Carapace reflecting there, but Pikachu just out of range for the Bounty Hunter. He's not level six yet either, so... We need to get that track online. Yeah, there's a Midas now on the Morphling as well. Or at least the recipe. Okay. Yeah, I believe it's just the recipe. Open on a J4 gets the kill there. Nice sleep set up. Astral, he's got an Echo Stomp. It's going to connect on Palantimo, says he waveformed in. Despite Carapace reflecting again, but minimal stun right now. And that will be it. But again, they take out Chen. Fairly squishy target. Still looking for Bounty Hunter to hit level 6. And those kills are that much more impactful. Yeah, and then he, then he starts farming heroes. And he has plenty of heroes to farm. He is pretty brutal against the Chen, the Lina, and the Nyx, and the Enigma. So... Goes back to me really liking this pick. Huh. That was a little bit of a miscue there. Elder Titan was TPing middle as Monkey King TPing middle, so Elder Titan actually canceled his. Um, so he's going to be on cooldown now, but Monkey what King, good support. he'll take it, yeah. Obviously at that point, let the Monkey King farm. Man, Bounty Hunter's doing a lot of roaming, despite, again, being close to level 6. 10-minute Bounty Hunters are coming out, though, so it makes more sense. He picks it up right here in J4. He just simply gets collapsed on. Valentimos slept up, already shifting the strength, though. So is it even worth committing? He's just going to try to steal more gold. Thank you very much. That unreliable gold. And goes back to the, the lane. You see Chen has the Alpha Wolf just following the Morphling, trying to enhance his damage. But other than that, that's really all he's doing. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, you know, wandering around looking for openings. I'm sure he's communicating to his team stuff that he sees on the map as they work on their, their farming. And looks like Chen will head to the bottom here. Maybe he'll pull somebody in. Looking to pressure a different tower. <clears throat> yeah, currently by himself, but like you said, a recall could change that. They're pinging him out, though. They see the Chen in the area. LSA dodged as Lena's down here, too. Off to the side. Black Hole comes out. There's all of a sudden four heroes here, so I believe one was recalled in. ES picked off for this, so Life Stealer kill pretty big. Bounty Hunter in the area, though. He is level six, so has those tracks. Unfortunately, his teammates are the ones that are dying. Fishman gets Brain Zap off. It's not going to matter, or will it? He needed a miss. Double kill happens instead for Lena. Okay, there's the rotation that Pavaga needed. Using the first black hole of the game. Does work with it. Monkey King. Uh-oh, Lena, she's in trouble. This is a big kill, especially with the track applied. LSA hits, but there you go. Let the gold flow. Too. J4 is definitely dead. That's another track kill. It's one more auto attack. He'll pop the one or the stick even. Divine Favor. He's going to live. He has a TP, but he ain't getting out. And just like that, BH is done with drums. That, that's how this hero feels. Like, yeah. you get level six, you go take one fight, and suddenly you have a, an additional item. Then you take another fight, now you have, like, two additional items. Basically, every fight equals a relatively big item for this bounty hunter. <clears throat> yeah, so right idea for Provaga initially. They got the big kill on Lifestealer, but they kept on committing for more, wanting the tower kill, a little bit more greed. And it backfires, so Hannah Midas is now finished on Enigma at least. 
been 302 already on this BH. He uh as as Jenkins once put it, he doesn't farm creeps, he farms heroes. Oh yeah. That's all he does. Two of those have been since the track. And top two net worth in the game belong on the radiant side, continue to be that life stealer. He has the arm lit queued up, so yeah, it's, it is going to be a different build. Again, goes back to this is not really the best Radiance game, and ES responding to that, making the adaptation. As he's going to push in middle lane a little bit. Not going to push the tower by himself, though. What did Monkey King go? He too went the Midas. He's going to Fusel. Okay. Nice damage amp. Yeah, lots of int heroes. To target with it too. Top lane, Fiend's Grip is ready. Morphling. Now Nyx Assassin is also here. Okay, there's a Fiend's Grip though. Palantimos not ready for this. Can he shift to the strength in time? He can. The wave form he gets out. They stop the Fiend's Grip. That being Nyx Assassin. Well played. Cheshire Cat ports in. He doesn't have a black hole. Lots of tracks applied. Yeah, the Radiant team wants these kills. Exactly. They want to finish with the tracks. Is a streaking. Nice job with the spike care base though. The Shuriken bounces to all three. They know the Morphling's up here. You see Bounding there still chasing to the right-hand side. Another waveform dodge from Morphling. Caught by the sleep, though. Over to the right. Nyx Assassin, the Spite Carapace, keeping him alive. Oh, Lifestealer shows up. Oh, the Lifestealer shows up. Pops the Rage. Needs one more auto attack. He can't get it. Oh Lul is still God. limping away. Needs another one now and because of the reach of the Spite Carapace. And Nyx Assassin is actually going to live. Now, not to be too overhyped because Morphling was finally picked off in the back. That chase, yeah, though. So pretty, pretty bad results still, but at least they didn't feed two additional track kills, which definitely could have happened there. Oh, yeah. That's Lena. She's tracked up. Might find a kill. Laguna Blade. Yep. I'm using that haste to find a kill on Elder Titan. So, Lena, she's got a Yule's finish now. Yule's very good here. And, uh, they, uh, Pavaga really needs her to come online and be useful. <laughs> With the way this game is starting to shape up now. Uh-oh, J4. Yeah. He's dead again. Maybe? Okay. God, look how fast Bounty Hunter is. 520 <coughs> movement speed with phase boots and drums and track. Yeah, what he, the hell is this hero? Yeah, he jets on out of there. He's good. Morphling could not do enough. And look at those odds now. They are updating, and Amiga feeling very good about their chances. I mean, this game, still definitely a lot of game left, but that's the overall series odds. Head over to 1xbet.com. If you like set odds, there's hope for Pavaga. 5.6, not too bad, but it's uh, already a great momentum start for Namiga. And like we keep going back to the Bounty Hunter snowball effect, going to happen more and more. But I feel like I'm pushing that too much because it's still only a 1,000 net worth lead. For the Radiant team, it's not like they're they are overwhelming. Dyer's top top yeah, that's true. Under attack. Yeah, the core is doing decent enough on the side of Pavaga. Of course, Hannah Midas has helped with that. I think uh, both Morphling and Enigma have one, right? So, yep, Dyer's two for two top or top two top to top. two in hands of Midas. And I mean, out of the eight kills. That Namiga has five of them are on Chen, so <laughs> <laughs> not the most impactful kills necessarily. Yeah. Hey, you see that life stealer? He's just having fun with the creep, the siege creep. Moving around with it. Bottom lane, Monkey King. Oh, uh, jungle. Morphling's been caught. Up there. Yeah, he goes down. He's out for 30. Here comes Cheshire Cat. Black hole ready. You have Lena coming in this well. It's definitely worth the black hole to get this kill. He's not going to use it yet. He runs in. He will finally use it. And that is an easy kill on a Monkey King. There. Took a little bit longer. Wanted to give yeah, it to Lena. Yules. <laughs> Lena Yules him right at the, as the black hole came down. Awkward. So, but while you're definitely still showing signs of maybe not being completely in sync. Yeah, I said it was worth to use a black hole for sure, but honestly, at that point, it didn't feel like it was necessary. <laughs> Still uh, decided to go for it. But that's on cooldown. Bounty just going directly for BKB next. This is something that we've seen a lot of offlane bounties doing. They just get the drums, they get the phase, and they just go for 
BKB because they're so tanky and they do so much damage with the free crit from track that you can just run down supports in fights. Life Tiller continues to farm away. Can't go much more for a mid game build. The armlet, the S and Y queued up for next. Is he going to jump inside Bounty? There you go. Here's that. A little bit of old school Life Stealer. Looking to catch somebody as Pikachu gets caught in the mid lane by three heroes. Looks like Earth Splitter was used for that. They're wrapping around mid. They're definitely going to go for a tower kill here. At least they want heroes, though. Bounty Hunter, who do they find? That's going to be Nyx Assassin. Never mind, he's invis. Run right by. Maybe catch... Oh, God, they caught somebody over here. That's Chen once again. <laughs> who's uh, who's green? That's Enigma up there. Yeah, he is going to get caught. Lifestealer Bomb finally comes out. Cheshire Cat, no black hole for any kind of a response. And an easy kill as they shred him down. 12-5. to 5. Bounty. Closing in on that BKB. Lifestealer has the armlet complete. Going for a Sanj next. And the Monkey King has finished the Diffusal Blade as well. So, uh, pretty, pretty good mid-game power spike here for the side of Namiga. And it kind of goes back to that lead. He's itemized to go Blink Dagger and Yule. So, really playing a very sort of like back lines, hit and run style of Lina, which is probably kind of telling of how weak the hero feels in this game. Yeah, his level 15 does get 350 life. Talent at least, so helping a little bit there. They have no clue Nyx Assassin's here, by the way. He even pop spiked Carrot Base, but they do know Bounty Hunter's here. The wave form in. Stun hits with the Impel. And Chosen One is going to be picked off. Now, Fiend's Grip happening, though, with a big crit of the Balance Strike and the Wukons. They drop the Morphling Sunlight, de distorting a little bit of damage with the Mischief, and actually survives. Hand of God coming out very late from J4. And the Radiant still chasing. Lil once again limping away with that spiked carapace ready to go. So he should be good. So he makes his way back to base. At least they took out the bounty on her before. Yeah, almost 500 gold streak going the way of the But in response, it was a, I don't know, three-person track kill, something like that. Were they tracked up? Uh, the... The Morphling was tracked when he died, yes. Okay. Uh, getting those down, and then obviously it lasts a little bit. He's recalling somebody on Chen. Looks like Morphling. Just going to bring him into farm. Yep. Free TP. Bounty Hunter, you talked about the BKB. It's almost finished now. And you also see the, the sentries throughout the map. It's more and more of those as the game goes on here. Both sides, in fact. Can definitely use those sentries. Call in uh, Nyx Assassin. Okay, going to use the fort. Open onto the Monkey King. That mischief not going to do a whole lot against Impale. Yules up. He is Yules. Pikachu's ready for the burst. Balanced Strike could not get it off. Laguna Blit, and they do kill the Monkey King. Obviously, Morphling morphing into him as well to help for it. And Fishman's also caught. So, a two for nothing. Going good for Pavaga there. It was all five yeah, finding heroes. That, finding the MK first is really big. He's a huge portion of their damage right now, with the Echo Saber now complete as well. <laughs> Echo Saber to go with that defusal, yeah. That's that's yep. a lot of damage. Lots of slow too. True. Very hard to get out of the ring once you're stuck in it. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Bounty hunter just doing what he doesn't like to do, farm creeps. But he wants to finish that BKB. S and Y finished by Lifestealer. And Nyx Assassin. Nyx Assassin's been pretty good this game. He's now heading top. They want to kill Bounty Hunter. They scan out the area. They know he's somewhere here, but... Oh, look at this. Lifestealer jumps inside. In fact, now they're going back in. But this Nyx Assassin... This might not be, be a careful. good idea. Yeah, I know it's not. In fact, they get caught first. Lifestealer jumps out, though. Pops a rage. They have a black hole. They need to use it. They get it off. Down goes Chosen One. Eventually, there we go. And now ESC's in trouble, too. The whole team, I guess that they're all five together. It works out pretty well. And Bounty Hunter 
Thought they had a play, but again, I go back to Nick's assassin. He's really been the biggest resource here for Pavaga. Yeah, he's a huge pain in the ass to deal with. And I like to see him maybe even pick up a gem here pretty soon. Fairly risky, but it would completely shut down this bounty hunter. Or vice versa. Yeah, true. Get one on bounty. Yep, Enigma closing in on that BKB also. And Morphling closing in on finishing a Lincoln Sphere, which will help him against the Fiend's Grip. So once he has that BKB, the only thing they do have for the stopper is uh, Fiend's Grip. Yep. They're going to try Roshan here, meanwhile. On the Radiant side, they know Black Hole's down. That's probably the biggest reason. Feel comfortable. And it's going to be a free Roshan, it seems like. Pretty slow. They don't have a medallion on anybody. But they're working their way through it. <clears throat> yeah, that is an item that you could see on a bounty hunter. Medallion earlier on, but again, choosing not to here. But yeah, eventually are going to kill it. They just, I'm sure, for life stealer. Never mind, Monkey King. He picks it up instead. How do you feel about that? Oh, about the Aegis going to Monkey King. Um, I think he's just their more important hero right now. Like, if he gets Black Hold, he dies, and they just lose the team fight. I think Life Stealer, while he is their position one, is much less impactful at the moment. Fishman, he's just maybe dead. Oh, the sleep! Don't tell me he's going to live. All the turn. Pikachu the L misses the LSA. The Fiends Grip turn. Are you kidding me? The Chosen One puts the... Fishman, God. Yeah. Puts the track up. Gets the kill. J4, he's now dead as well. Another track kill. That was impressive play from Bane. The okay, disjoint he with the sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he just like shrugs it off like, yeah, that just happened. Oh, yeah, man. That's, that, that feels really so good. bad for Lena, too. She just she used a blink. She was feeling like, okay, free kill on Bane. Nope. And they are getting super aggressive. They're just running across the map smoked. Nice. They want to catch somebody else, get some more track kills, but... Dude, your creep waves, your lanes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to push those in. Yeah, it seems like the much more efficient use of your time right now. Rather than uh, chasing with the Monkey King and the Life Stealer. They're going to ping out top. They're going to go for Nyx Assassin. But again, do they even have dust? Like, do they have vision? <laughs> I don't know if they do. Well, they're going to see him. Nyx doesn't have Vendetta yet. There we go. They pop out. They notice him at the last second. And with the Rage, that is an easy kill. Did he really not have Vendetta? Because I clicked on him right afterwards and he did. It so. just came off cooldown. It uh, literally, okay. like, just came off cooldown as they jumped him. Really unfortunate timing for Nyx there. Because, yeah, they did not have any detection. All right, so that kill. They are going to get the top lane pushed in. Top right, go for the tower. Life Stealer. I think, yeah, he is trying to build a Desolator next. So it goes back to, again, when it comes to objectives, Namiga is not the strongest at. Desolator will help. Or Mr. Life Stealer. And Lena is going for Ags next. Wanting to just kind of cut through Life Stealer or... Any BKBs that will be picked up, which will be numerous on the side of Namiga. One on Bounty Hunter, another one on Monkey King coming. Pops a BKB for this. And she another one on Elder Titan, also queued up. Jeez. Yeah, she really needs that Axe. Which, again, it's only on the one target, but... It's, uh... These BKBs is going to be brutal, but Bounty Hunter right there, that's what... That's got to be almost, like, I want to say 10 deaths on Chen, like... He is just a dying machine this game. It ain't easy. Yes. Oh, that's actually Fishman getting jumped. Oh, look, Boo going. The monkeys still hit through the sleep. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, they still do. And actually, Palantimos is going to end up falling thanks to the Earth Splitter to finish the job. They pop a shrine, though. Astor going too deep for this. Or is he? He's still alive. Malphistun maybe going to secure it, though. But now 
Zitrax jumps back in, and Lowell's going to fall on Nick's assassin. Enigma, he's got a black BKB. hole. He pops a BKB to run, and he doesn't even get away. He too falls. So they got Pikachu two kills, but Pikachu is caught too. The inhibit comes out. The LSA completely whiffs. He had a BKB anyways. Just throws up the Yules and hoping to delay this as long as possible. But Zitrax is like, yep, I got your flank. And they finish the job. We have our biggest lead now for an Amiga, 9,000 net worth. And it's uh, no signs of turning the other direction at this point. Yeah, this is not looking good for Pavaga. Like we said at the beginning, this could be a very snowball. Pretty even for a while there. Uh, but when you're just chain feeding kills into a bounty hunter, you are asking for trouble. Yeah. There's another one. J4 again getting picked off. The Aegis still on Monkey King. Only about probably 30 seconds or so more. It's not the longest time left on it, but safe to say they got plenty out of it. Desolator complete on the Life Stealer. Thank you very much. Gonna push what is Monkey bottom. King going to go for next? Maybe a Butterfly or a Scotty, something like that. Hasn't queued up anything yet. I think Scotty, you know, would be actually pretty. Just getting that natural life against the Selena. Top tower is under attack. Isn't that a bad option? Oh, courier! Oh no, courier! Don't Dying die! It's dead. J4, killed. don't die! Well, you're gonna die again. J4, zero, ten, and five. Ouch. And again, it's so much more significant being that there's a bounty hunter. It's like one thing. There's some yep. games where you're like, okay, you know, he's feeding. It's not the end of the world, but you're giving up a track kill every time you do this. Yeah, I think of those 10 deaths, probably eight of them have been track kills, which is really bad when you think about it. Yeah. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. All right, tier two bottom. Clean out the last of the outer towers. The Aegis no longer on Dyer's Monkey King. Uh, they are not going to go. So it might be in a spot where if you're an Amiga, you have a very comfortable lead, but let's not force too much here. Get bigger and better items. Go for another Roshan once he comes up. It is going to be an Eye of Scotty on Monkey King, by the way. Top tower yeah, I like that itemization. Just, I mean, he's going all in on these slows. Just anything like Wukong Ring. Oh, free catch on the other Titan. But now Cheshire Cat slept up. Chosen one. He's, he's thinking. Remember, they do have a black hole. Got to be careful. Life Stealer jumps out. They find Pikachu. Pikachu was not ready for this. Hand of God is not going to save her. She's actually alive. They didn't finish the job. The black hole oh, comes out. Zitrax caught in it, but out comes the Wukongs now on the BKB on Cheshire Cat. Obviously not going to matter too much either, although Palantimos morphs into the life after they killed him. So it is going to matter. The fact that Lena got out and the Radiant team, they, they couldn't finish. They got a little panicked right there. Yeah, that was a really big play. Killing the Life Stealer off, trading three for one, just the Chen, who again, sort of his role in this game. All right. Lena must have had like five HP. Oh, <laughs> it was. I, I think he even thought he was doing He's kind of just like standing there. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> like, wait a second. I might live. And just simply uh, walked away. So that's uh, obviously, yeah, Chen. It's been a struggle of a game, but big part why there. Radiant team too cocky and thought they had it already. Yeah, Scythe is finished, though, on Bounty Hunter, and he's coming bottom lane because look at this, a Fiend's Grip. That's a forever Fiend's Grip. How is it going to be? Long enough, though? Sleep, 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 going to get up. No, Pikachu, though, in trouble. Yule's on up. This Bounty Hunter by himself. He has to be careful with this. In fact, oh, he nice. needs to get Good out. Feed. Yep, gets caught by the stun. Any kind of dust, they do have a sentry. And that's going to be a feed from Bounty Hunter indeed. Okay, you don't want to do too many more of those if you're an Amiga. Yeah, their team is not that good at team fighting. They are very good at snowballing and just getting kill after kill, pick off after pick off. But if they have to fight Pavaga in a full five on five engagement on Roche, for example, that black hole with the Lincoln Sphere now complete on Enigma is going to be a huge problem. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, Life Stealer is going in Abyssal Blade, though. Um, so it will be another way to ideally deal with a black hole from Enigma. 
Yeah, unless he just black holes kind of on top of his body, and then you can't even apply it. You have to be too close. Do you have to be too close? I guess so, huh? Yeah, it's got to be pretty much melee range. Ag's finished on Lena. So finally has that now. And Amiga, I don't want to say they're playing scared all of a sudden, but Scanning. seems like, uh, you know, kind of addressing the fact, okay, you know, this kill from Bounty Hunter that they thought they had didn't happen and have to be a bit more careful now. They know Roshan's up. Elder Titan just spotted it. And they put the life stealer inside Bounty Hunter. And they're going through the woods. They're hunting. I have Scotty just finished on Morphling. Here comes the next assassin. Again, going to be exposed. That next assassin's been doing so much work with the vision game. Stop the sleep. The stomp is going to hit three. Hero sets up a perfect Wukong's Pikachu on the Oscars. Cannot do a damn thing. Lowe's going to get picked off. The rest of them just melt away. And Palantimos, I just mentioned, he just finished the Eye of Scotty. So he's not buying back. Yeah, this is going to be a set of racks. That three man echo stomp. Yeah, I said they couldn't team fight as well, but. <laughs> Proven wrong, Caster's Curse, whatever it is. That was very, very good sequencing by them. Really, really good stomp into sleep, into Wukong's, into Balance Strike, and Roshan's up. Uh, okay, they think better of this. <laughs> they know Black Hole is up, I'm sure, so they decide, let's go for Roshan. Now, Roshan was up this whole time, so curious as to why they just didn't go for it initially. Yeah, here comes the smoke from Pavaga. Like you said, they do have Black Hole. Uh, Elder Titan, he's staying out as he should. Awesome. Dyer scans this. They know what's happening. Morphling's still there for 10 more seconds, though. This would be a risky play. You see off, well, off to the right here. There we go. BKB activated by Bounty Hunter. There's the kill. And Aegis is picked up by Zitrax this time. So got a little scary there, but Namiga secures the Roshan. Vaga, all they can do is just watch. Morphling is back up now. Oh, Bounty's been caught. Doesn't have BKB. He dead. 70 seconds he's out for. Yeah, no buyback. How about this? Bavaga, I mean, they're playing aggressive. It's, it really shows you how confident they are when they have the black hole cooldown. In fact, I hear an everybody go southwards. Come on. Down here, what's going on? Okay, Fishman's got... Saved by the Elder Titan stop. Yeah, that was a little scary. And Amiga started going in. I mean, they do have the Aegis, but you're fighting an Enigma Black Hole and four on five right outside of your base. If you lose that fight, you're definitely losing Rex. <clears throat> and Cheshire Cat, he's working on a refresher. He's got 3,500 gold saved up. So double Black Hole is very real. My friend. In the near future, Monkey King is this greedy. He goes in. Okay, gets a blink at Alina. Bottom lane, sleep on Palantimos. Has a Fiend's Grip. It's not going to use it. Fish man, trying to run through. <laughs> He's in trouble. Oh, he avoided the impale, but the Malphus hits. And the easy follow-up. I mean, for a team that just killed Roshan and won a fight, Three heroes dead. It, it feels like Domingo somehow is on their back foot. <laughs> and their 10k net worth ahead. Yeah, yeah. it does not feel like they are ahead right now playing this game. <clears throat> Black hole. Nobody tell Pavaga. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> Pavaga's like, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> and the Black Hole presence, Lena, even though she's fifth in net worth overall, with that Laguna Blade ready, it's. Oh, they found no. Enigma. Oh, no. Okay, well, they find Enigma. They're going to be able to do anything about it. The sleep comes out. The support is not enough, Cheshire Cat. He is dead. Nyx Assassin being run down as well by the Life Stealer. And the Bounty Hunter turn their attention elsewhere, though. They want Palantimos. Can they catch him? He's TPing out. No, they cannot. Something popped the Lincolns, but either way, he gets out. That yeah, just goes to show. Enigma is the only reason that Pavalga have a chance, really, in this at the moment. And really good find the, the track to pop the Lincolns into a Scythe of Ice. Bottom, by the way, Luna might be caught. Bane's setting up a flank. I'm watching the minimap casting here. Looks yep. like they are going in. Bane's fiend's gripping. Luna, her life is melting. She dead. Does have buyback, so not the end of the world. Oh, my stream just and refreshed. 
it does mean that there's two heroes that are not at this fight, at this push in the mid lane. But... Loki trying to kill J4. Yep, the Earth Splitter will finish the job there. And now Nyx Assassin, he too is dead. He's stained it, in fact, on Nyx. The rest... Why are you even trying to defend that? Yeah, <laughs> no, there's no point. I mean, the bottom lane is still taking pressure from the creep wave, but with only the creeps, the Radiant team is not feeling like they need to respond to it. Palantimos morphs into the Life Stealer. Oh, black. What do we got? I think he might be ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, anyways, Palantimos, there's the black hole from Cheshire Cat. Comes out. He just got refresher as well. He's going to pull them all in. Zitrax getting low, and there's a second black hole on top. So three are dead. Zitrax is coming back up, and he's losing his teammates. The double black hole we knew was always scary. He eventually comes out. And the hold is real. Life Stealer, Rage TP, he's good. He makes it out some way, somehow wow. at the last second. But <laughs> double like black that. hole. Yeah, kind of. I mean, they still lose the racks. Yeah. And they're still 15k behind. But killing four heroes is a pretty big deal. And it just goes to show that even this far behind, if they do have the refresher black hole, they can take a team fight, and that's pretty important for them to be able to come back into this game. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make sure you're synced up with me. I know for some reason, unfortunately, it goes off a little bit, but I'm at 39-10 in game right now, 39-11 counting, so. Yeah, I just refreshed the stream. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully we get. Yep. Bottom lane, Pikachu. They're killing the Tier 3 tower. They're going in. Yeah, buybacks are ready for the Radiant, but they're in that spot of kind of close. Elder Titan's going to resurrect soon. Monkey King decides to go for it. Bane dies, though. Bound in or even buys back, though, and they're going for this now. Sunlight Wukong. puts down the Wukong. He's level 25, has the bigger yeah, radius. Palantimos is caught. 90 seconds, he's out for J4. He will actually be able to TP out in front of them, but the rest do get out as well. So at least he has a buyback this time, but they kill Morphling out of it, and they only lost the Tier 3. Was well, a buyback on both Bounty and Monkey King, though. And Bounty's pushing out the mid lane now. Let's see Monkey King, 3,600 gold saved up. Oh, that's interesting. Morphlin just finished a Mask of Madness. Going for Satanic? <laughs> I suppose oh, so. He's going for <laughs> Satanic and for Butterfly. Yeah. And he just, for some reason, bought the, the Mask of Madness first. Completed it. Has he, he, he hasn't had the the Morbid Mask this whole game, has he? Yeah, it's uh, usually something that you do get on on Morphling. I think he did. I, I think I oh. remember seeing it earlier. Okay. Oh, they're just going right in. They they know again. <laughs> it's the theme. <laughs> they know Black Hole's down, so much more of an opening. And you can tell Pavaga is not nearly as confident. Coming back up very soon, though. I assume Refresher's still on cooldown for a bit. Yeah. You will only have one if they do decide to fight. That's a black hole ready, but they ping out the shrine. They get the racks. They melee racks even. Top and now they are going to kill the top shrine. So Namiga continues to sit somewhat comfortably on this now 13,000 net worth lead, but... One ultimate from Cheshire Cat could swing everything. And Refresher also just purchased by Lena. So she now has double everything, double Laguna Blade, etc. Interesting. I guess, yeah, just, I mean, doubling up on the Laguna Blade against a Lifestealer or a BKB Monkey King could be most of their HP. Yeah. Or just finishing off two BKB targets. Pretty pretty utility build for Pikachu this game, but sort of what he's been reduced to on the Lena. It's it's more about Cheshire Cat landing these black holes, and to that end, he picks up a Shadow Blade. Okay, another way to get in there. Yep. <laughs> AC being worked on for Zitrax. He's got nearly six thousand gold saved up. Uh, Roshan, going to find out shortly here 
how long it's going to be. And it looks like it's going to be a really long respawn. That's got to be nearly three minutes even, two and a half minutes or so. That's going to be a while. That probably benefits Pavaga more. The longer they have for their black holes. I, it probably has a double black hole by now, I assume. And Yeah, everything is off of cooldown. I mean, it'll give Palantimos more time to work on that Satanic. Does finish up the butterfly. Buyback status. It's about half the half the players have it. Yeah, it's favoring Namigo right now for sure. Morphling doesn't have it due to gold, by the way. The oh, black hole on the chosen one. The solo black hole to kill Bounty Hunter, but he doesn't have a buyback. Yeah, it's a dieback actually. And you're okay with that. I mean, you have the refresher for the exact reason. So you don't, it doesn't always have to be a double black hole team fight winner. You can just use it for a solo pickoff, which is extremely powerful. But yeah, a little risky there. Palantimos opting to just finish the butterfly instead of holding for buyback when he's one of the few players on his team that does have it. Yeah. Monkey King will just cut the creep wave there and. Run away quickly. He's got his own cheese. Spain, that's uh, that's risky. <laughs> uh, he might die for this. Yeah, he's dead. And the Amiga's falling apart here a little bit. Down to a 6k net worth lead. They're up to yeah. 17 at one point, I, I it, think. It feels like that Pavaga, honestly, again, it's when Black Hole's ready, it's Pavaga's win percentage chance goes up like crazy. <laughs> Yeah. So when it happens to be down and things are still happening, then different story. But so at right now, he considering he has a refresher use if needed, I think Bavaga is most certainly in the lead. Radiance top shrine is under attack. Yeah, it's funny. There's you know the tier one top is still up. Forty five minutes into the game, not for long though. But like you said. Like the just the double black hole essentially nullifies the entire net worth differential. Life still is gonna try to pick up an MKB to help deal with that butterfly now. This will come in handy. That was purchased by Morphling. Yeah, I don't really think you want to be light. Uh, you don't want to be man fighting the Morphling as a life stealer at this point in the game. He just doesn't have. Doesn't do very much for your feast because his HP pool is pretty low, his armor is so high, and he just shreds you. Yeah. A bounty hunter going an Aeon disc. Has to live through getting caught in a black hole or Laguna Blade burst. Yeah, to be honest, that might even be a good idea for like the Monkey King. Ult is so important. Winning fights. If he gets picked off. Yeah. They know Roshan's up, they being Pavaga, they, they have an idol on there. It's the third Roshan as well. And each team does have a gem. Bounty Hunter and Nyx both carrying. I see Elder Titan with one, I thought. Or was that Bounty Hunter? Okay. Oh, BKB. They pop the Black Hole. It catches Zitrax. Can they stop this? No. Fishman goes in, but he can't do anything about it. Zitrax running the Lacuna Blood hits, though. He's dead. He has a buyback. He's going to use a Wu Cause. They have to run from it, and they do just that. Another Black Hole is ready, by the way. For Enigma. And Wukong is now down. Yep. Namiga trying to disengage. Yeah, with Wukong's down and the black hole ready on the other side, you are feeling pretty scared right now for Namika. <laughs> and look at that net worth diving quite a bit. Again, Roshan's up, so both teams in that area. Radiant what was Lifestealer even doing up there by himself? He was he was pretty far away from everyone kind of just wandering around that's sort of what happens sometimes when you when the momentum swings so heavily like this you just kind of you don't even really know what to do next <laughs> the whole lost. map used to be yours and you're just kind of like well should we be aggressive because we have been the entire game yeah blink dagger picked up on the life stealer i just saw that that is okay jump the lena i assume <laughs> 
Yeah, jump Lena, or if you can, jump the Enigma. Just some form of mobility. Also, Blink picked up on the Bounty Hunter, so going for that extra mobility. <clears throat> you think back, that top lane defense, the double black hole from Cheshire Cat. Yeah, game-changing experience right there. Yeah, absolutely. It's an ability that can make for it and did right here. Now, Pavaga, they do not know Roshan's going to be happening, or they do have a creep in there. So, yeah, they're going to kill the creep, but it makes it pretty obvious. No, they're just going to go for it anyway. Yeah, I don't know if I like it. That seems risky. And Amiga going to try to catch them out beforehand. Bane, he's going to be the victim, if anything, before. He just pops asleep on himself, hoping for the best. Doing some counter warning in the process. And he's going to hold them off for now. Bottom lane being pushed in by Morphling during this. Here comes That's the Wukong, though. So Nyx Assassin, he is dead. Palantimos caught as well for the Bane's Fiend's Grip. Palantimos! He came back in and he dies. He's out for 100. He has buyback. Nyx Assassin already using this, but they also catch Enigma. No black hole as a result. That time, the Wukong's command comes out in the clutch. And they're going to be able to hold the bottom lane now and get Roshan. You can see the odds. Still favoring Namiga overall series pretty heavily. 1xbet.com to play set bets. As Lena. She has to blink away. The fortification comes out, unable to get the Rax kill out of this. And that'll be an Aegis picked up by Monkey King. And I'm guessing the refresher on him, too. Very back and forth game so far. So you still have a black hole. <laughs> still have uh, at least one. Buyback's available on the Morphling and the Enigma. We'll see if Namiga tries to force them out. Oh, there's the buyback. Yeah, I was gonna, you, you just run if you're Namiga. Do not risk it. Yeah, buyback is back up for the Monkey King. Actually, they have it on everybody except for the Lifestealer. So pretty good in that regard. This is sort of where this game it becomes a game of buybacks, really, in the late game. It's all about how many bodies can you bring to a fight. I have to keep that bottom lane pushed out. If you're Namiga with the, the racks actually very low in life. Want to make sure that doesn't get backdoored on you quickly. Or split pushed. Elder Titan, he's got his own BKP we've talked about already. This Blink Dagger, so that they have so many catches. Um... And that's something else, too. Yeah, Elder Titan, of course, is Aura. And nice. I believe he would have won a 70 attack speed talent. So he himself hits pretty hard. He's up yep. in your face. Nyx Assassin has fallen off a little bit, considering the gem pickups, finally, that have been happening. You mentioned Bounty Hunter. He still has his. In fact, kind of a low middle lane. I guess he has life to learn side, but not going to find any chances for an open. I feel like a four staff would be really good on the side of Pavaga to disengage from the life stealer and the monkey king. Oh, they're running in. Bounty hunter. Uh oh. Okay. Eidolon talent from Enigma, by the way. So he has a lot of Eidolons to work with. Yeah, basically ensures that if they are able to get the Enigma, it's. I mean, the buildings are gone. Wait, did he go that? Is it the cooldown reduction? That's all 15, though, isn't it? Well, never mind. Yep. He went for the GPM talent instead. Oh, this is so tense. It's, again, very close calls here. Bane, TP's even coming in. Oh, man. They don't have detection. They did not. That was their own sentry, and he was just buying some time. Chosen one, he pops to BKB. He's running in. Life to their finally pops out. Jumps in onto Cheshire Cat, and Cheshire Cat goes oh, down. No aim, buyback. The Hannah got unable to save him. Down goes Palantimos. Without a black hole, do you really have a chance if you're Pavaga? I don't think so. Just like that, back to 14K net worth. How did they get caught out so badly there? Uh, they they kind of got panic mode. They spread and that blink dagger on life stealer the the key that into an abyssal blade. It's like what do you do? Yeah, the blink hex also on the bounty hunter. Look at this, Wu Kong's into the fountain. There's nowhere to run. <laughs> <laughs> that feels bad. So 
Enigma, he's he's not coming back anytime soon either. He's, he's going to be out for the full 80 seconds. Pikachu, he just melts. He buys back quickly. Nyx Assassin cannot do the same, though. Palantimos, Fiend's Grip, if he goes down, that should absolutely do it. He is not, though, just yet. He morphs back into the Monkey King. He's going for the turn kill on the Sunlight first. He is tanky, but Spirit Vessel applied. He oh, is eventually going to survive, actually. Monkey King, they just call GG. All right. So fighting it out somewhat there, but again, without the black hole to stall it ultimately, feeling like they didn't have a chance. And a game that just swung like crazy ends up with Namiga taking in, finishing with a 24,000 net worth lead. Yeah, let's we'll see that graph at the end. That must look pretty fun. Let's see. It's like, it's like my heart. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's just up and down, up and down. Uh, but, yeah, aside from that, really, I mean, great play by Cheshire Cat finding that black hole. Um, I think it was it was pretty Namiga favored for most of the game. Other than that few, like the few moments where Cheshire Cat had the black hole available and was able to set up for a, a big team fight winning ultimate. Whew. That off lane bounty hunter, you know, could have skill much more crazier as far as the team the snowball effect but credit to Pavaga in terms of holding it as long as they did and making it a much more of a game than it seemed like it was going to be from the earlier parts but this this Namaga team again don't know Namaga <laughs> this Namiga <laughs> team we uh, haven't uh, heard too much about them as somewhat younger players across the board this is uh, kinda, you know feels good victory it's still a lot of work to be done but they're moving on in the next round. They're going to be playing Gambit in the semifinals of what's the Eastern bracket later on in this week. So different challenge for sure. Yeah, I definitely like their itemization. I think that they had a very good grasp on how to play that game. And uh, I, was, I was impressed by Fishman in particular and his Bane play. Yeah, he had some great escapes. All right, so that does set up our final series of the day, Empire versus Pango. Should be another fun one here. Uh, Empire, a team that's been through a lot of roster changes throughout this season and, and previous ones, in fact. Um, their most recent one we'll, we'll take a look at as we get into the next series, but the Pango would definitely favor them. Again, we'll break that down more as we return for game one of that series, our final series of the day here for the Tug of War Radiant Edition. Brought to you by WePlay. I'm Breaky CPK, joined by Elevated. We got game one of our final series going to be coming up next.